Okay, so this problem is similar to the one previous in that we have a position function of a particle. The particle moves along the x-axis. Its position is given by the equation x equals 2 plus 3t minus 4t squared with x in meters and t in seconds. Determine a its position when it changes directions. changes direction. Um, oh, okay, so what do we know when something changes direction? So let's say something's moving in um, it's just a very simple uh, little thing. Let's just visualize this. A person is walking with velocity in this direction and then at some point later the same person is walking in the point that direction. Well, if we think of velocity over time, and if velocity is positive here, and at some point it's negative at the time in the future, that means whatever this velocity, whatever the, the function takes the shape of, the point where it goes from positive to negative is zero. In order to go from positive to negative, you have to go through zero, right? It's just a, you know, um, It's just a number line, right? You have a positive number, you want to get to the negative number, you have to go through zero. You can't go around it. So that means at this point where the person turns around going from this direction and then starts going in the other direction, his velocity must equal zero. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. Run in one direction and then turn around. At some point you have to stop yourself before you can go in the other direction. All right, um, so if, um, if we know that the velocity has to equal zero, then we have to, you know, that's the added information that we add to this problem to solve it. How do we get there? Well, we have the position function, and we know that the velocity is equal to zero. The velocity is equal to dx dt, that's instantaneous velocity, or d dt and we have the the position function 2 plus 3t minus 4t squared and that's all equal to zero so the important point this is all math but that equals zero part that is the important part because that is the physics of this problem the knowledge that in order to change direction your velocity has to be zero at some instant um, and what are we after to begin with? We are after its position when it changes direction. So we're after x. We can't, you know, we don't know anything about the position when it changes uh, direction from this, but we can find when the velocity equals zero, and that's going to be able to give us the time when the velocity equals zero, and then we can plug that in the, in the position function. So let's just uh, stop talking and do it. So velocity, if we differentiate each one of these terms, uh, remember that if you want to differentiate dx dt, where this is an arb, you know, a generalized function, so that's, let's say, a t to the n, that's going to equal a n t to the n minus 1. Whoops. That is the general power rule of differentiation. So differentiating, this is a constant, so t here is non-existent, so the derivative of that is, it's, it's like two times, 2 times d to the 0 equals 2, right? So if I differentiate this, that's going to equal 2 times 0, t to the 0 minus 1, we have a 0 in there, so all that equals 0. So the derivative of 2 equals 0, plus 3 minus 8t. Now we have the velocity function. Here comes the physics again. We set that equal to 0. And now we can solve for t. So then t is just equal to 3 eighths seconds. So that is the time when 
changing direction. In order to find the position, we have to take x of t equals 2 plus 3t minus 4t squared, and we have to find x of 3 eighths seconds. That's 2 plus 3 times 3 eighths minus 4 times 3 eighths squared. Uh, let's see, do I have this calculated somewhere? Yes, x then equals 2.56 meters. If I were to think about this graphically, the x and t, we know this is a parabola. We know it's open downward because it has a negative coefficient on the, the second order term. Plus, I can throw it into a computer and see that, the, that it looks something like this. That means when it changes direction, its velocity must equal zero. So the slope must equal zero. That's going to be at the peak at the, uh, of the curve. And its position then is equal to x equals 2.56 meters. The velocity would be a linear function with a slope of negative 8, so it's going to be sloped this way. Uh, let's say I know that it must be 0 at this point in time. So the velocity is going to look something like that. Part B of the problem says uh, determine its velocity when it returns to the position that it had at t equals 0. Okay. Uh, for one thing, I didn't draw this graph accurately because at t equals 0, x does not equal 0. So if I redraw the horizontal axis like this, this is more correct. At t equals 0, x is somewhere above the origin. So let's find what position it is. First, we're after velocity when returns to position at t equals 0. So first let's find the position at t equals 0. So x of t equals 0 equals 2 plus 3t minus 4t squared equals 2 plus 3 times 0 minus 4 0 squared, 0, 0, so x equals 2 meters. That is the position at t equals 0. So now we have the velocity, where did we find it? Here we have the velocity function. We can find the velocity when the position at, is at t equals 0, but we first have to find the time. Because here we have the, um, we have two things plotted on the x versus t graph. We have position and we have velocity too, is this line here. The go-between between position and velocity is time. So if I find the time when x equals 2 meters, I can then use that time to find the velocity. So we know one of those times is t equals 0. But what, when else does it, uh, the position equal 2 meters? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say x equals 2 meters equals, well, I'll just leave the units out for now equals 2, let me slide this up a little bit, x equals 2 equals the function for position 2 plus 3t minus 4t squared. I'm going to subtract 2 from each side of the, the equation, so 0 equals 3t minus 4t squared. It's a second order equation, so we're going to get two solutions. Factor out a t, t times 3 minus 4t. All I did was factor a t out of each term. So now we see this has two solutions. One when t equals 0, obviously, because uh, we just found that at t equals 0, x equals 2 meters. But also, we have this side. This equation is also satisfied when 3 minus 4t equals 0, or t equals 3 fourths. So when t equals 3 fourths, 
x equals 2. So now we can go back to the velocity equation, velocity equals 3 minus 8t, and we can plug in 3 fourths. So velocity of the function v of 3 fourths equals 3 minus 8 times 3 fourths. And there, then the velocity is negative 3 meters per second. So we have found the velocity at 3 fourths of a second. The velocity is negative 3 meters per second. And we have, uh, we found three, 3 quarters of a second because we know that's the time when the position equals 2 meters after t equals 0. So if we're looking back at this equation here, so it's going to look something like this. Um, the position equals 2 meters at t equals 0 and all the way out here at t equals 3, uh, I'm sorry, the position is 2 meters at t equals 0 right here and here t equals 3 fourths position equals 2 meters. But if we go down to the velocity, the velocity is going to equal at 3 fourths negative 3 meters per second. Per second. 